Hey, Jim Bergman on behalf of AccuTools. Uh, now that we've got the, the vacuum guide republished, we're getting some questions periodically on why you have to purge the air out of the system uh, before you actually do a pressure test. And if you go to page 70 of the guide here, it says, after the lines to the various refrigeration cabinets have been installed, it's necessary to purge them to make sure they're not clogged up. Purge with a dry gas such, an, such as anhydrous nitrogen or carbon dioxide, exclamation point. This will not only tend to blow out uh, some, some of the atmosphere or some of the droplets of water, but also pick up some of the moisture. And so what we're talking about here, again, this page 70 uh, review of vacuum for service engineers is we want to take these air molecules and we just want to sweep them away, right? So when we sweep the molecules away, even though that there's some moisture in these sponges, these air molecules, it's all going to get swept away and carried away down the system. Now, it's not that nitrogen or oxygen and air is going to suck up the moisture, but moisture will reside in the open spots between the molecules. So we talk about the, the, the air having 50% relative humidity, it's holding moisture in the air and we want to make sure that we're carrying all that out. Now the question becomes, you know, I got this, this nice dry system and I want to purge this air out. Well, what happens if I just take and this tank of nitrogen and I take the pressure up to 250 or 600 PSI? So when these air molecules all of a sudden get compressed, right? It starts to wring that water out as liquid now into the refrigeration system because we've taken and compressed all these air molecules and now instead of sweeping them away, now I have actual liquid water in my system that I have to remove. Now just imagine how long this paper towel is gonna to take to dry out. Remember, there's no flow in a vacuum, we're just reducing pressure. So now all this moisture has to boil away before we can carry it out of the system. So if you want to decrease your evacuation time substantially, the secret is purge with nitrogen. Now, this is a, a nitrogen uh, regulator, and I have on here a flow meter. And come in here a little bit so you can get a little bit closer on this and show what the flow meter does. So when you open up a nitrogen tank, first of all, you wanna be pointed away from the valve here. So I'm gonna open this up, and you wanna make sure that you fully backseat a nitrogen tank. This is 2,000 pounds of pressure. You don't wanna mid-seat on these. You don't want the packing holding the pressure. You wanna make sure that it's backseated so that the pressure now, it's got a, it's got a double seat on here, so it's backseated fully. Now this regulator on here has a gauge and it's gonna show you that it's got, in this case, 2000 PSI of nitrogen on there. And we don't wanna let these tanks go down much below 500 PSI or we might run out of nitrogen while we're doing our brazing. Now this has got several settings here. It's got a, uh, an off, a braze, a purge, and a test function. And the key thing to remember with this type of a regulator is when you look at the pressure setting, this one's 250 PSI on here. If you were to block this port, even on any of these settings, it's eventually gonna build up to 250 PSI. This flow meter can only take 50 PSI. So if you're gonna pressure test, you have to just unscrew this flow meter and take it off and then we detach our hose to our system, right? So let me show you what this does and why this is so important. When you open up this and we go to just to purge, you're gonna see, in this case right here, a braze, that this is going up to about, let me just put my glass on so I can see here, about 15 SCFH, standard cubic feet per hour. So it's pushing very, very slowly through here, and this is just enough pressure to keep the, the, to keep the system free of oxygen as we're doing our brazing. Now when we get all done, we're gonna turn this to purge. And if you turn it, to, well, before I do that, you can see this ball is floating here, right? If I put my finger over this, you'll see the ball will drop down because the floating stop. You also hear the pressure's building up, right? And that's again, because this regulator set at 250 PSI. So the pressure will build up very slowly. If you cap this off, it's gonna build up very slowly and it'll blow the relief on this, um, on this flow meter. Now, when I turn it to purge, obviously you hear it goes up, you can hear the flow substantially increased and we're now at about 60 standard cubic feet per hour of flow on there. And this is, again, to purge the atmosphere out. So we want a pressure that's high enough to push everything out, but it's low enough that it's not gonna compress that moisture. When we turn this off, again, we're gonna shut it, turn it all the way down, fully front seat it so it's blocked off, and then we'll just open this up and purge the uh, residual nitrogen out of the regulator assembly before we take this off. So these are really slick, does the job, but you, can, you, you really should have a flow regulator on here so we can make sure that it's flowing nitrogen as we go. And you know, again, we wanna make sure that we're not compressing this air because we don't want that moisture to fall out in the system. 
once it falls out in the system as a liquid, it's going to take forever to remove. So hopefully this is a good demo and it helps you understand it. Again, if you haven't picked up the guide, Review of Vacuum for Service Engineers, it's a great, uh, great guide to pick up to help you understand a little bit more about a vacuum and evacuation. This is Jim Bergman with AccuTools. Thanks a lot for watching.